Okay, then 12 shots at 18 foot pounds out of the FX Indy. No pumps between shots. This is just purely from the little onboard air reservoir. Using a Diablo Hunter from Air Arms. They're a 16 grain pellet. No cleaning, no washing, no oiling. Just straight out the tin, into here and down range. Target is approximately four inches square and it's about 35 yards. Put the whole mag down towards the target and we'll see how we do. Quickly. I also forgot to mention there's a reasonably stiff breeze blowing from left to right as well. So that might affect the results. Let's take a look. There you go. I don't know whether you can see the smoke blowing out of the chimney up there, but that's blowing pretty hard <laughs> from left to right. Let's go take a look. Now the first target that I set up, I haven't had a shot at yet, and it's about 25 yards away. The second one is probably a good 10 yards further on, at about 35 yards. Oh. Well, there we go. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Just a quick note of how far the needle went down. It went from roughly 250 bar down to about 160 and it was per still producing consistent shots. So that was 12 shots at 18 foot pounds without the need to pump up. That's pretty good. Just on the subject of pumping it up, if you are target shooting, I would always advise that as soon as you've emptied your mag, you pump it up before you fill your mag, because it does take a little bit of effort to pump it back up, and the last thing you want to do is fill your mag up again, pump it, and then think that you're going to shoot straight as soon as you sit down to start firing. Pump it first, and then fill the mag. Gives you a chance to get your breath back, get your heart rate back down. That's it. That'll do. The wind has picked up a little bit, and it's blowing all over the place, so I hope that doesn't cock this test up. But on this one, we're gonna have a shot again, 25 meters. a little bit more like it. Let's go in for a close look. Whoa. 
Yeah, nearly fell off the wall. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Still had a couple up here. But, um, yeah, that's tightened it up quite a lot. Okay, let's have a go with just the bipod this time. It's even windier now. But we're going to go at 25 yards on a rat target, and then 35 yards on a squirrel target. Paper targets, not the real thing. Before anybody starts slamming that dislike button. Yeah. Now you've probably noticed that I don't take much time between my shots. And that's on purpose. You know, I don't want it to be absolutely perfect. I don't want to breathe all the way out. All the way in and, you know, hold my breath and make everything really perfect. I want it to be as close to a real world setting as possible. And I would normally have the bipod out if I was lying down shooting something. Wind. Well, you're going to get wind, you know, could be blown from any direction. So all those things in play today are good. Because if I can get a nice tight group in those conditions, then it's all good. I know I can get a nicer, tighter group if I really take my time. But what's the point in that? You know, you're not going to get the time if you're shooting rabbits or rats. You've got to take the shots when you can. Really, if you're walking about, your heart rate isn't going to be at a resting rate. It's going to be elevated. So I'm not sitting waiting for ages until I come, until my heart rate comes down and I'm really, really calm and everything's very steady. That's a way to get pellet on pellet. But if you're walking about in the woods or across fields, you're simply not going to have the time to do that at all. So I like to keep things as real as possible. Okay, 35 yards at a squirrel target. That went quick. I'll bring it in, let's have a look, see how we did. And when you're looking at a little target with a scope not turned up all the way, you know, scope turned halfway up, uh, this seems like a hell of a long way away. But that, 25 yards, pretty good. I'm very pleased with that one. And this one. The first shot was a little bit low, so I just tried to cluster them all around the first shot. 
and that one at 35 yards isn't bad either I was aiming up here first shot went down there so I just adjusted and tried to put them all in here obviously if I was shooting a real squirrel I'd kind of be aiming for this top half not the bottom half but that's a pretty good group just a few more notes on this FX Indy when I first got it I wasn't really too pleased with it I couldn't shoot very accurately with it and before you start saying you still can't shoot very accurately with it I have got a lot better I think it's just as the barrels got worn in and at the highest power setting 30 foot pounds I can until I'd put maybe three, four hundred shots through it, it wasn't accurate at all. Now, it's fine. It's almost like the barrel and the parts, they just needed time to get worn in and shooting accurately, you know? Plus, getting the right pellet was a bit of a chore as well. I settled for those Diablo Hunters because they consistently give me the best results. I've tried much heavier ones, I've tried lighter ones, I've tried pointed ones, flat ones, ones with a cross in the front, ones with drilled holes in the front. I must have tried seven or eight different types. But I find these ones to be pretty much the best. And they're not outrageously expensive either. I haven't tried any of those ones where you get almost like a little sabo sort of a thing with a, with a plastic skirt on. You fire it in, the, the, the little copper point or something flies in further or something I haven't tried those because they are outrageously expensive likewise I haven't tried any of the really really cheap pellets because the last time I had an air rifle which fair enough it was a springer but the cheap pellets were crap just throwing them all over the place and I don't think they look any better now than what they did 20 odd years ago before I bought this fella. I should really do a full review on this, so if you, if you do want to see me go into detail about what I think of every aspect of this rifle, please let me know in the comments section. I do really, really like it. So the review is going to be pretty good. This one has three power settings, 12 foot-pounds, 18 foot pounds and 30 foot pounds. Now, in the UK, the legal limit for an air rifle is 12 foot pounds. So that means you either get one of these and use it illegally, or you put it on your firearms certificate, which is what I had to do. So, obviously, that took a space up on my ticket that could ordinarily have been filled with maybe another 2 2. You know, I could get night vision on a 2 2 and uh, have one for shooting during the day and one for shooting on a night can't do that now because I already own this one and we're pretty limited in the UK. And the resale value of this will be incredibly low because it's on an FAC, it's on a firearm certificate. If it was just ordinary 12 foot pounds, resale value would be very, very good, but not many people want an FAC air rifle. I went for it just to have the option of the extra power and I'm more than happy with the way it shoots. I suppose like anything it's only as good as the person using it but you know you saw me I wasn't taking my time I was shooting in real world conditions and it performed pretty well. On the end we've got a Huggett silencer this is that's the bigger version of the Huggett pretty expensive for an air rifle silencer I think it was about 90 quid but it really does make a difference to the noise it really really quietens it down the scope is a Hawk God, Hawk Air Max 30 with illuminated reticle don't really need the illuminated reticle but it's just something there if I do fancy it it is a nice scope and it also comes with like a shade tube as well which goes out to about here it makes the thing just look even more ridiculous than it does already I love the idea that you can put two mags in here you've got your pressure gauge so you can see when it's dropping too low but as you've seen it can go from about 250 bar all the way down to about 160 at 18 foot pounds and still shoot pretty accurately so that's a full mag without needing to pump up and that that's just it's great it's really really good this is a Vanguard Equalizer Vanguard Equalizer Pro 1 
Now the other bipod I've got on my other rifle is a Harris 9 to 13 inch one. And although it does allow you to tilt the gun, it doesn't allow you to track a target or push it forward and backward and still stay on target. So this one takes a lot of getting used to. When you first use it, it's wobbling all over the place. But once you just relax and let it settle into position, it does make for a, a pretty accurate hold. Now look at that. You can rock way backwards and forwards. You can track right around. And it can also tilt the rifle as well. So this doesn't have to be sitting perfectly flat. You know, you don't have to bother fannying about getting the legs equal length because you can tilt the rifle. If you're not on level ground, you just tilt it. I really like this. In fact, if I was going to get another one for one of my more powerful rifles, I think I would get one of those again. If I can find it anywhere online, I'll put the details to that and all the gear in the video description. This was pretty much a video about nothing, but um, I had a good time in my lunch break, shooting a few targets. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see me do a proper review on this, also let me know in the comment section. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.